Okay, let's go ahead and cover some disaster recovery concepts because as you know, no matter how well your fault tolerance and your redundancy uh, is configured and, and how much you know X number of things you have in place to prevent a disaster, chances are at some point in time it's gonna happen, whether it's a sprinkler head or somebody cuts a cable or pulls a cord or deletes data off a server or deletes the entire server. They thought it was no longer needed, you know, what have you. At some point you're gonna have to recover some data. So we need to make sure we understand throughout the environment what data actually needs to be backed up. Not all data really needs to be backed up, you know, in all honesty. Some things can be recreated very quickly. So a lot of times you'll find that you're backing up data in your environment that's not necessary. And in some uh, instances, you may have two, three, four, five copies of that data <laughs> that's not necessary. All right, and just as a side note, if you are a backup uh, admin or if you've ever functioned in, in that capacity, you know that it is a... <laughs> It's a very lonely feeling when you go to recover some data and it's not there. Whether it is, you know, just a bad tape or it never backed up properly to begin with, testing, 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 all right? You never want to be in a situation where it's critical, you have to recover that data and it can't be done. So, again, determine what needs to be backed up. What is the retention policy? How long do we need to keep those backups for? Is it a week? 30 days, six months, seven years. Again, it's gonna depend upon your individual environment. And then classify that data, is it all the same? Do we have to have the same retention policy for all data? And then the next thing you have to understand is what is the RPO and the RTO? Okay, we talked about this previously, but the recovery point objective and the recovery time objective. Okay, how far back and how long do you have to recover? So do you wanna do you wanna basically have an RPO of say a half an hour or an hour, maybe half a day? or maybe 24 hours, okay? It just depends upon the tolerance within your organization. And then how long of a window do you want to give yourself to be able to recover that data? So, in, and again, you have to be realistic. You can't say, all right, well, I want to have an RTO of 30 minutes, but yet you have hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data that you couldn't possibly recover in that amount of time. So you have to understand that it's different for each data set, and then some data is more important than others as well. And then, where do the backups live? Are they on array? Do you use some type of things, uh, maybe like snaps or clones? Are they off array? Do you replicate maybe somewhere else? Maybe bump, uh, bunker that data off to a separate array. Uh, does it live on disk or VTL or tape? Or is it offsite completely? Do you, do you have like an Iron Mountain or some type of, of data uh, protection company third party that takes those tapes and then actually transports it off uh, somewhere else offsite uh, to give you that extra level of kind of separation in case of a major disaster? And then we talk about backup execution and frequency. Uh, as I mentioned, the recovery point objective and the recovery time objective. How often do backups occur and how quickly does that data need to be recovered? And then, as I mentioned, how long does it need to be retained? Again, these, these are all things that should be defined in your actual backup policy. And again, it will depend upon the business unit and, of course, the type of data that's, that's being uh, backed up and recovered. And then you also need to ensure that backups can occur within the backup window SLAs or service level agreements, do they conflict with other backups taking place? In some environments, you may have hundreds or thousands of backup jobs taking place each and every day. So you have to understand how specific jobs will conflict with other jobs because it may, you simply may not have the amount of time necessary to complete those jobs. So that may not fit within the SLA and it has to be, things have to be adjusted accordingly. And then lastly, do the backups impact network or server performance? You may need a separate network for your backups, so that way when you do those backups, it doesn't impact production servers and production applications.